gonna give them a vision of the world. The way it really is. Welcome back to the fifth episode of Ken LaCourt and John Moody um, kind of reviewing Loudest Voice, which is Showtime's take on Roger Ailes and Fox News. Really, we're here to give you kind of our our aspect of, of what happened, not review it as much as a, a typical reviewer would. But, uh, John, what did you think? Uh, yeah, I'll let you start because I got some definite I, feelings on this one. Ken, I think they got to the point where they, they no longer had any idea of what was happening at Fox News or with Roger Ailes. So they just said, you know what, guys, let's make it up. And, and they did. And they got they, they, they created a gross caricature, but they didn't come anywhere near to the subtlety and the way that Roger operated. And, uh, you know, of course, now we're getting to the, the sexual harassment part. And that's what they've been dying to do uh, since the beginning. I, th- I think that this, again, the first couple episodes, you know, when we watched it, we were like, okay, here's what's right, here's what's wrong, here's what's shaded on it, but they weren't evil. Now this is just, look, this is a liberal's wet dream of what Fox did. It was, and we'll go through some of the things here, but they've turned everybody except one or two golden people into complete, uh, they call them in the industry mustache twirlers. Everything about the, what the person says and how they, the, every line that they say, it's just evil, evil, evil. I don't think that there's a murderer that I've seen on screen recently that has come off worse than Roger and some of the executives here. But uh, some people probably believe that. But let's go through it one at a time. So let's start with with Roger. So Roger, they've took, taken out any kind of nuance or humor or goodness to him. Now he is completely paranoid. Um, um, he's into birtherism, which he wasn't. He actually told me to stop reporting on where we, when we said, hey, well, he actually kind of hasn't given a birth certificate yet. And, and he was very, uh, he, he, he never bought that. He is, uh, he is about as bad from A to Z as you can get. This is what Media Matters and all the lefties think that Roger Ailes was all about. And here is Russell Crowe being him. Any specifics well, what, on what, that? What they've done, Ken, is they've taken one of the most complex personalities that I ever encountered, and they've made him one-dimensional. And... And they can do whatever they want. It's their <clears throat> crappy little, uh, ep, you know, uh, mini series. But uh, that that certainly is not uh, the Roger Ailes that we knew. So let's get to the first one, which was uh, the woman whose allegations of sexual harassment did take Roger down. He and Gretchen Carlson. So Gretchen Carlson had a morning show on Fox. She was uh, universally disliked by her colleagues, um, um, and she did get an afternoon show. Now in this in this. In this episode, they, uh, you know, she was like very disappointed that she didn't get a prime time show. And oh my God, two o'clock in the afternoon, that might very well have been true. I mean, mm-hmm. there was nobody in the building besides Gretchen Carlson who thought Gretchen Carlson should take a prime time show. I mean, part of it is she wasn't that good. Just go back and look at some of the some of the repeats of her two p.m. show. The other part was every primetime show host was kicking ass. I mean, what are you going to do, fire Bill O'Reilly or Sean Hannity, who is number one in their slot, and say, well, we know you've been winning your time slot every day for the past eight years, but we're going to fire you and put in Gretchen Carlson in, at, at 8 p.m.? I mean, that was kind of weird. Any, any takeaways on, on, on the interplay between those two? Oh, I, I think it was kind of uh, – that, that was <clears throat> one of the few – parts of the of this show that I thought was believable because right. because Gretchen did want to go on the view which was an, a, a syndicated show and, right. and she thought it would help her career and would get her some job offers and Roger played her along pretty well he said you know what you're right go on the view and and in the meantime he was saying be careful who you hire <clears throat> he was telling other executives in the television news business you know mm-hmm. be very careful of this woman mm-hmm. um, all of which is you know, part of the game of TV news. But, um, uh, and then when she realized that her uh, one outing on The View was not going to get her uh, a, a raft of job offers, uh, Roger pretend, I think pretended, <clears throat> to offer her something better and said, how would you like your own show? And then dropped it and it was going to be at 2 o'clock, which is sort of Death Valley. Well, it's Death Valley, but it's, it's I mean, well, it was Death Valley until... Megan Kelly came in and, and totally yep. owned it and created her entire career out of that. 
Yeah, I mean, so true. Yeah. some people actually used it as a as a massive step. Look, Gretchen's problem with as as a as a host, and and I feel a little bad because I had advised Roger multiple times to cancel the show and get rid of her. I mean, I just I thought she was bad TV. I never knew her. Nobody seemed to like her. I don't think I ever met her. Um, but cable news is very revealing. And if you're somebody who's a little uptight and doesn't like people, it just comes off that way. And I remember that show would start up and it was all purple and she'd give the, f- she was like being down south when they can, when they can, you know, like, oh, welcome to my show. And it was just, it dripped insincerity to me and she dripped insincerity to me. And that's why I, that's my opinion, why the show tanked and, 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 Tanked in comparison to Fox. I mean, it's still probably one yep. time yep. slotted. It did okay. It did, everything on Fox did okay. I mean, a dead raccoon, as Roger said once, in a slot would have increased and done okay on Fox News. Um, but that show sucked, and and I kind of feel bad that I was one of the guys saying get rid of her, and then he did, and you, then the you, domino you were one of falling. many guys that said get rid of her, right. and right. and not just guys. So the other thing is um, um, you see her finally getting her resolve up and, and you see that she's going to fight back. And she starts audio recording him. Um, the one thing, well, and, and, I, and that is true. Now, um, I read her entire complaint. Look, if you ever read a, a for, for people who haven't read legal complaints, if somebody's going to sue their boss for sexual harassment or whatnot, you can always tell in the complaint when they started audio taping somebody because it's, you know, and, and her complaint, and, and I'll post a link at the bottom of this so people can read the whole thing if, if they want. In her complaint, it started off saying, years ago, Roger said, if you sleep with me, I'll get you a better show or something along, along those lines, which if true, and I don't know if it's true or not, totally quid pro quo, wrong sexual harassment all the way. Then you saw the, 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 the part of the complaint where it's not just, oh, somebody said this, it's somebody said, Hello, Gretchen, comma, I think um, that we should, and, and, and the quotes get longer and longer. And, and I remember in the O'Reilly suit, uh, uh, looking at it, it's like, it's clear she has a recorder. There's everything, you know, including ums virtually. And, but when Gretchen started recording it, I read all those long quotes in there. There wasn't much. It was uh, the worst quote that I saw that, that she had in there was something to the effect of Roger said, you know, years back, we should have we should have had sex. You would have enjoyed it or I would have enjoyed it. And it would have been good for you, too, or something along those I, lines. I, I think the wording uh, in the lawsuit, it was you would have been good and better and I would have been good and better. Something very similar to that. But in this and, and OK, I could see Roger saying that I could see a lot of people saying that. Again, I don't know what had happened, transpired before that. But in this, it's that ass of yours is a hand magnet. Yeah. I, whether he hit on her when she first was coming in the door and, and whatnot, I don't believe for a second that he kept up any kind of sexual harassment. A, because she would have recorded it and it would have been in her complaint. And the stuff you see in this TV show is, 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 just, is just bullshit. You know what that line sounds like to me, Ken? It sounds like a clever TV writer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, and yeah. So there was that. Gretchen did get a big lawsuit coming out of out of out of Fox. Another thing, and, and that is, and we'll get more into Gretchen later. But that's also a good evidence that people say, well, why would they have paid her her twenty million or whatever whatever she was reported to have gotten if if she wasn't if it wasn't guilty? And the answer is, well, maybe it was to assuage guilt, but twenty million dollars a long a lot of money to have somebody have somebody do something. Two things. One is the Murdoch boys, the sons, wanted to kill Roger, and they wanted to make sure that his coffin had nails in it because they didn't want him going across to, to you know, some other some other news organization and and taking a taking a run at Fox News, and so that made him kind of almost untouchable by by anybody else. And secondly, they had an insurance policy on it; they didn't pay a penny. Some other insurance company actually gave their company money to reimburse for that. I will. There's an article on that. I will link back to that as well because I think only like CNBC was the only one that has reported this because it was because again it's must be guilty it was a payoff. It was an insurance payoff. Well, that's right. I mean, it's it's being portrayed as the offense was so egregious that Fox would have done anything to shut Gretchen up and make her go away just change the wording around. They would have done anything to make Roger go away. Um, Roger was a complete a-hole in this. He, he has, so he's got this, 
young Joe Lindsley, who's helping him working on his paper, who's kind of who they make it look like Roger kidnapped him and all. You know, I do know that he had this 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 young guy working and 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 they were tight for for a while and then then had a falling out. But Roger at dinner, you know, telling the guy's sister that she's an idiot. And when she's like, you know, but Obama loves his kids. Well, Hitler loved Ava Braun. I mean, it was just like I wasn't there, but I'm calling shenanigans because I just don't think he was that big of an asshole in any situation I'd ever seen him in in my entire life. Ken, you you, you were with Roger a lot and and he didn't attack people that he didn't know so blatantly as he is portrayed doing to the sister of Joe Lindsley. I think he would I think he could have said, well, you've got some learning to do. He could have said any number of things that left her with her mouth open. But I don't think that he went on full attack with people that he was meeting for I, the first time. I had never seen that. And if he did it, he'd say it in a funny enough way that there was a little bit of truth that people would be like, oh, whoa, okay. And then everybody get on right. and have a fun time. But again, uh, another thing which was just, I, I know it's an episode coming up. They have him meeting years before with one of Trump's guy and pledges his undying support of Fox News to Trump saying you would have the full support of the Fox News channel as – uh, because he wanted to pick the candidate, such bullshit. John, how many, how many, uh, how many seasons, how many political seasons did you go through with him, and did you ever have him say, like in a Republican primary, "This is our guy," or push the thumb on the scales? Because I never saw that in almost twenty years. Yeah, I mean, I went, I went through four election cycles with him, and um, certainly Roger had favorites. I, we, everybody knew who he wanted to win, and it was always the Republican. Uh, well, but, but in a primary, though, I, I never knew. I no, didn't know no, who no, he wanted no, to win. No, I'm sorry, not not in not in the primary. Yeah, in the 2016 um, primary, I had no idea who he was supporting, and I don't right. think it was Trump. If it, I, I mean, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, he liked Trump after he was the nominee. Clearly, that that's that's the case. But yeah, beforehand, well, I mean, and either him or Hillary. That's that's what it was down to at that point. I mean, I I believe that that the person that Roger would have loved to have as the Republican. Uh, nominee was David Petraeus, the former general, uh, retired general, who had some Me Too problems of his own before anybody knew what Me Too was. Right. I tell you, that was like a coup. But he, but he certainly was not an early supporter of Donald Trump. I, th I think he viewed Donald Trump as a very talented entertainer, and in no way did he ever think of him as living on Pennsylvania Avenue. Yeah. I mean, I think, like a lot of America, he saw it as, as the campaign progressed. He saw... This is this could actually work, and, and this guy actually might pull it off. But yeah, no, and the concept that the concept that whatever year it was supposed to be two or three years before the election that he's out there like yeah we'll 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 pledge the full support of the Fox News Channel to some candidate who's kind of a goofy guy who got three percent last time around yeah and is a joke yeah I, I think it's portrayed as being in 2013 which means Obama was just taking beginning his second term. And he's at a, a fictional lunch with Roger Stone, uh, who he did not hold in high esteem. And, and Roger Stone didn't have the, uh, the power to, uh, to make that kind of a deal. Anyhow, that, so we know where that's going. We know that they, that they are going to show that Roger Ailes gave America Donald Trump. I mean, that's coming right. up. They've, they've got two more episodes after this? Yeah. yeah. Um, what else which do we is, got? Which is so too, we, too many. <laughs> We've got, uh, um, I, they were extremely nasty to Beth Ailes. Uh, they turned her into this kind of over the top. I mean, look, Beth was a true believer. She believed in republicanism. She did all that. But, you know, now she's, uh, she's, she's just this kind of, kind of half crazed person who is, uh, is, is worried that the welfare cheats and the Muslims and the communists were going to come and attack them because his house had a panic room in it. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned beforehand, what percentage of celebrities in Hollywood and in Southern California have a room just in case somebody breaks into their house and they got a problem? Yeah, it's probably. I, I, I just think it would be fascinating to ask Sienna Miller, who portrays Beth. You know, she's we got take a one. Look at the, could we take a look at the basement of your house? Right. I've got one, and it's got it's got lots of guns in it just in case. So I guess I'm paranoid too. But uh, thank you, I'm forewarned. But I don't have a big sliding door like the other one. Oh, and she said that they had a a, a tunnel down to the down to the river. Well, the house yeah. was like a mile and a half above above uh, 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 above yeah. the Hudson. So that would have been quite a freaking tunnel. That's uh, that, that, <laughs> that that would have been worthy of uh, 
of some 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 of the old uh, tunnels that were dug from east to west Germany. I, I don't know if it's true. I'll ask. But Roger never told me about the tunnel that would take us down to the river. If if if. Um, uh, so we have two heroes. Um, of course, Joe Lindsley, the kind of hapless kid who's. Uh, who he, you know, he's just realizing that he's fallen into the cult of Roger after his sister gets his attention. He tries to, he tries to get away. He's, you know, he keeps saying stuff like, well, that's not journalistically sound, Roger. And, and it was just, it's like, okay, maybe this kid was, was some weird voice of, of, of reason out, out in there. Um, um, one of the stupidest things that I saw. So again, we are literally on fantasy land. They should have called it Box News and Roger Bales or whatnot, because it was just so stupid at this point. So or, or faux news, as some Fox haters like to call it. So it's 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 election night. Roger, <laughs> yeah. Roger, like this kid says he's going to quit uh, Roger and he's going to move out of the house. And, and, and I know they lived in, he lived there for the first few months. I didn't think he lived there for years. I, in fact, I'm 90 percent sure that's not true. And Roger decides basically to swat him. So, of course, Roger has this set up. Now, Roger did have cameras set up so he could see somebody coming in in the hallway because he was worried about security. He also yeah. had it on, on his house out, out as he built that house, I remember, because he'd be like, that tree's in the wrong place. And they'd call up and they'd keep an eye on the construction of it. But now it's like, you know, it's like he could see people going to the bathroom and the guy, you know, changing. You know, he's, he's, like, uh, he's like Inspector Gadget changing, uh, changing scenes to watch Joe Lindsley. Anyhow, he tries, to, he tries to get the cops to go to his house and then get Joe Lindsley to go to his house, presumably to get him shot or something. I, I don't know. And, and then, and of course, this is election night. And Bill Shine comes in. The decision team has made a decision and they're going to call it for, for, uh, for, for uh, Obama re-election. And Roger's like... Yeah, hold off on all that. I'm busy here, and and you go have them stall. And it was like, come on, this is the equivalent. I mean, what the? What, what, I, okay, first of all, you'd work, you'd worked, you'd run the decision desk uh, as 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 part of your. Did did you have to go to Roger to get his okay to to to, to make no. the call on that? No, it was it was completely understood that the decision desk worked independently, and when when the decision desk felt that it had the um, undeniable truth of right. the result of a vote. We called election. So you never yeah. went to Roger and, was, and he was like, I'm busy trying to get this 20 year old kid arrested in my house or anything like that. I, I, I can remember <laughs> elections, not presidential elections, but others that were of importance where he would call me occasionally and say, are we going to call this anytime soon? Right, right. Especially if another network had called it before we did. But it was never uh, you, you have to get my permission before you can make this call. No. Anyhow, so the kid didn't get shot by the cops, and you could see the disappointment in Roger's face. And then it was like, ah, and then the country's ruined because Barack Obama. Well, and then, then they talk on the phone, and, and Roger actually assumes godlike status. You know? Yes, he said, God's busy, and I am your savior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. If anybody wonders what I mean by the mustache-twirling evil person, it was shit like that, yes. Uh, comparing, uh, comparing the president to, to Hitler— and and uh, and God's dead. He's too busy for you, Joe. I'm your I'm your savior. Okay, but Roger's gone. Who can ask him? Uh, Look, it's, and then it's, we it's, it's 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 like it's like the villain who lays the girl across the railroad tracks right. and her hands and feet are bound. And, right. You know, the, and and there's just nothing to it. And then he goes. Ha, 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 ha. It's exactly. Uh, it's exactly. Go ahead. So then we got a new hero, uh, a new hero, Gabe Sherman, coincidentally the writer of this of this of this horror show. Uh, shows up. Well, you don't uh, think the, that influenced it, do you? The actor's name was Fran Kranz, Fran, F-R-A-N Kranz, K-R-A-N-Z, uh, who I loved in Cabin of the Woods. Uh, uh, he's, he, was a, he was a stoner in that. He was, he was wonderful. In here, he looks just as geeky and, 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 and acts just as geeky as, 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 as Gabe Sherman. But, you know, he's also another, no, I'm coming in for the truth. I don't have a... Okay, so... So Gabe Sherman had written a long article on Fox. It was actually one week period where like three major news outlets said, we're doing an in-depth investigation on Fox News. I think it was Rolling Stone, The Atlantic. I mean, it was all those kinds that they hated Fox, but it was kind of weird. All within a week, they all decided to, to, to do this. Right. And, and Gabe Sherman's was the, was the last coming out. And I remember it being fairly sloppy. Um, um, I didn't get the impression that he was, what I got the impression was, is that he had only one or two loose sources in Fox. So he didn't have the way to double source anything. And so people would tell him things and he would just write it down and, and go with it. Uh, for instance, one, one time, one of the guys who worked for him is like, 
Ken, I'm mentioning here, is this gal work for me? And I called Roger. He's like, first of all, I never called Roger ever in my entire career here at Fox News. And secondly, yeah, she would have worked for me at the dot com, but she had been shifted on to the to to the uh, to the political unit uh, because of the campaign. So there were a handful, not a small handful, a, a healthy handful of just dumb mistakes, but mistakes and sloppiness. Over the year, as as Fox refused to talk to Gabe and and we tweaked him and and, and did things, he went from just kind of your typical I don't like Fox guy to oh my gosh you know on his Twitter page and and he clearly became an adversary of the company. Um, you have any insight in 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 him or or, or any I, of this? I've I never met Gabe Sherman. I've talked with him on the phone. Um, yeah, I mean as as his project became more and more the the goal of his professional life, uh, he had to find something. And uh, you know we have to remember that that. The book itself, on which this crappy series is based, um, had nothing about sexual harassment in it. Um, no, I think he had one instance of well, like Roger from, from in like years, 1972, from years but he didn't have from any of before. this stuff. Right now, he so, ended up breaking a lot of the stuff because he became the golden favorite for Gretchen's legal team, who said, "Hey, of we've studied the." Somehow, Gretchen's legal team found a dozen people. It was less than a dozen. It was maybe maybe six to eight. Yeah. Most of them were unnamed, but well, at least one of those I thought mm, that sounds. I knew the gal, and I didn't think she would make some things up. Um, yeah, and then, um, so and then the cherry on top of the Sunday was when Lori Loon decided to talk to Gabe. <sighs> Lori Loon did, and then of course News Corp leaked to him. I mean, so so he became because he had that book, which didn't have any of this shit in it, um, and was among the less interesting books I've ever read on Fox. Um, um, I mean, I literally told Roger, and, and I'll probably mention this again. I'm like. I had to read this book because it's about you. But if it wasn't, I, I wouldn't have made it past page page sixty four, and it had a lot of pages. Um, so one and and one of the, the 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 here's an example of of Gabe, just kind of one person tells him something and turns it into something. So so in this, there's the PR guy who gets fired in in this, and he's based on Brian Lewis, as I've multiple said times. I think is an evil, just not a good person. Um, um, and and he certainly was a source of Gabe. Now, they they painted it in here as as he was the good guy. And then he was like, oh my gosh, you're doing bad things about him, and 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 this and that. What I believe had happened, and I've got good reason to believe, is he was making himself look good. He mm -hmm. uh, that Roger at a certain point was like, okay, stop talking to him, stop feeding this, and he continued it on, and he was continuing to give settle his own scores within the company and. Lo and behold, here he is, played by Seth MacFarlane, and he's the he's the cool guy again. Um, um, that look, that's good advice for anybody who is 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 thinking of of talking to a journalist who is writing a book on their company. If you leak, you're going to get a good role. If you shut up, you probably won't. Anyhow, Gabe was told by someone, maybe the PR guy, uh, that that there was this secret room on the 14th floor, and they called it the dark. Was it the dark room? What what, what did they? Uh, yeah, the dark room, the, the black room, the black like black room. I, I think they called it. And I worked I worked mainly out of Los Angeles, but I had an office on 14. Now, now it was the exact opposite of that. So that so that was the floor that housed the internet, both the internet editorial, the internet tech people, and then the promo guys, the ones who would write, you know, coming up on Sean Hannity, he slaughters AOC, uh, those people. And it was one of these. Hyper modern offices. It was it was one of the more recently renovated ones where everything was glass. You couldn't pick your nose in your office without your employees seeing you, and everything. So it was like the most open design. And but but then it got in that there was this black ops room. Now Roger did have a lot of people looking at Gabe and figuring out how to fight this and tell me what's going on. I mean you know he, Roger was obsessed on Gabe Sherman for at least a year. I mean where a lot of conversations were yeah. about that. Um. But then this dark room, and, 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 and it's weird because this is one of the problems with journalism right now. You go type Fox News dark room, and you'll see hundreds of things because he mentioned it in an article, he being Gabe, and then The Atlantic would just repeat, oh, and there's a dark room. And then it just got repeated in all of these. Nobody else said it because it wasn't true, and it is all over the place. And then it gets into lawsuits. Um, one of the silly girls was suing Fox, and she's like, well, and then they had a dark room on 14. And and but again, didn't exist at all. But in this movie, 
Brian sees that some, that that the guy one one of the one of the bad guys had hit the fourteenth floor, and so he went up there, and and the doors open, and it's like Beirut. It's just there's holes in there. There's no. It was like construction, but no construction was was going on. And he creeps and 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 and, and goes. And there it is. There's this room with four or five guys on a computer, and they're putting up. They're literally like making a a cartoon of 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 Gabe Sherman with a big, you know, Jew cartoon nose type of thing, which I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure never happened. Um, and and put it in the links in the comments if if you see it. And so, like, to get this completely made-up thing, to then visualize it and see this, and it's just like, this is just, this is, this is, this is a dream sequence. Yeah, well, Ken, I mean, as you say, the 14th floor is is made to look in this like like a bomb has just gone off in there. Uh, you worked there, and I had often had occasion to come visit you on the 14th floor. I can tell you that people in the television newsroom be- below ground were very jealous of the 14th floor because it was so modern and so up-to-date. And they said, oh, why can't we work here? It is a little uh, weird so, to have a glass door in your office. I mean, you had a, you had an office that closed, right? Yeah. I didn't. It was a, literally a glass door. And it's like there's the staff, you know, there's the editors for the for the dot-com and all that. And Anyhow. Well, I mean, I it's, didn't like it's, it as much it's, work it's, it's pretty. It's the new normal so that nothing bad can happen in your office. Okay. So, look, uh, uh, John, anything else from this? Let me look through my notes. Hitler, Trump, birtherism. I am pretty good on this. Um, um, look, if if you want to find out what was going on in Fox, this oh. is now completely in in fantasy land. This is literally like, this is this is what th- these are the are the weird dreams that uh, that that anti Fox activists would have. This is this is now jumped into into that kind of a into that kind of a world. Yeah, I mean, again, we've talked about it in another episode, but. This this idea that Roger was popping open bottles of wine to entertain Gretchen Carlson in his office. Uh, uh, he yeah, just there was you know, that. He, there was that. He didn't do that stuff. Yeah, I literally never saw him drink in thirty years. So, all right. All right. Well, this one's a little shorter than the others. The more bullshit, the less we have to say. Uh, if you like these, please hit the ding dong button, hit the like, the subscribe, all of that fun stuff. Uh, we have a couple more of these coming up. I have talked to Gretchen. Uh, I did not talk to Gretchen Carlson, but I talked to Greta Van Susteren. That also starts with a G, and we will uh, we will pop that out soon, and we will get some other Fox insiders uh, coming up to speak. We at LaCourt News will also be starting to produce some some news things beyond just talking about Fox News, and uh, those are in the works right now, and they're coming up at you soon. John, thank you. See you next week. If you like this at all, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the little bell icon and it'll let you know when the next one of these videos comes up. We're also involved in the comment section, so please ask questions or give your thoughts. We'd be happy to chat with you. Finally, LaCourt News is going to be putting out a lot more videos. We're taking a very critical look at the media because they often lie. And we would love to have you on board with this and giving us your thoughts as we grow this into something real. Thanks.